Hey, today is about minimalistic filmmaking, a term that in my opinion is not at all used enough. When filming in really small places, you can't bring a lot of gear, you can't have a big setup. That was the case a couple of days ago when I filmed the second episode of my chapter two with Matilda. Hi. Hi. I cried. Very glad. We were filming in her apartment, which was super cozy, but not very big. A kitchen, living room, and bedroom in one. So it's like a small studio apartment. Being able to put a big light in a small apartment like that without it being in frame was a challenge. So in an apartment like this, where you don't have a lot of room and you need to light it well to get the shots you need, you can't really shoot wide. So I was mainly using my 50 mil or I was using this Helios 58 mil and I was using the 24 to 70 on 70 because the choice of lenses actually was affected by the light sources that I had or, or the space. With them filmmaking, there are a lot of people saying that you need a lot of gear, a lot of lights, all these things to make a good video or good film. And that's just not the case. Shoot, poor shoot. Sometimes you can get this cinematic look without having to put up a lot of lights. Well, just using the blue hour from the outside filming Matilda as she was staring out the window, it works perfectly. So let's do a short breakdown of the shots that I made on Monday. I realized that I could do some of the shots without even using the light. I used the window as a backlight and that was more than enough. Then I used the key light to kind of fill in and serve as more of the light from the outside. So even though we had light from the outside, it was not quite enough and we used that and it still looked like it was coming from the window. And then for the shots on the couch, I just made sure that I didn't have my key light visible in frame and I had it angled in a way where it looked like the light from the window was what hit her on her face. And as you can see in this frame, you can see that the in the left side of the frame that we have the window and that kind of makes you understand why the light is hitting the way it is. So this is also part of it, like understanding where does the light come from and based on this, where do I have to place my light? The other thing that I needed to do was make the candles behind her light her up a little bit because otherwise it wouldn't really make sense and that was a warmer light so then I used this little aperture I don't remember the name it's, it's here and that one just you probably can't even see much of the difference from this angle but these small lights can serve as such like good light sources. So when we were doing the last shots in the bed, we had this little light placed on a tripod in the bathroom, and then you even got this kind of light beam going through the bathroom door and on her. So don't underestimate the power of those small little lights. Then after having showed you guys where the light is actually coming from, I brought the light out, and it still looks like it's from the bathroom, but it's actually on the outside, as you can see here. A shot like this, a couple of years back, I probably would have said, no, it's not good enough. Like, we need to highlight some more. We need to have some more light on her face just to make her more visible. And if I did that, it would have looked awful. It would not have looked real. So as soon as you realize that you're going for the most authentic look, I think that you will like your scenes and you will shoot better films. I also think that being a solo filmmaker kind of forces this minimalistic filmmaking because you need to deal with more of the production yourself and you don't have a lot of resources. Just wait for the helicopter. I really wanted to go for the style where I was doing the interview handheld. And usually I would never do this because I would want to be sitting there looking at my subject as I was interviewing them. But with Matilda, it was not a problem because she was used to this. And then I got this much more, in my opinion, like near 
and depthful interview and also being able to go closer to her face when she was saying something that was more emotional. And I think that using this technique is really powerful, but something that can be hard to do as a solo filmmaker. Gimbals have a purpose. Sometimes they're, they're great, but when doing interviews, doing just documentary work, I, I don't use them. And to be honest, the biggest reason I don't like using a gimbal is because I hate balancing those things. So as you can see in these shots, I went for a very minimalistic, simple look to the interview. It's kind of what I'm doing a lot. I did the same thing in my episode where I have the light on her, filming her very much from the side. Um, not as much as 45 degree angle, but maybe like 60, 70. Also really being conscious of what is in the background. There's just something sometimes where you feel like it's too empty. Filming the hands can be good, but they have to serve a purpose. You can use them and it works as a transition. But if you're trying to use the hand movements as an effect for more emotion or the person being sad, stressed out, emotional, make sure it fits your video. Because I see a lot of filmmakers using that kind of shot and it doesn't really serve its purpose. So just be aware of, uh, of that when shooting hands. I feel like I've been just rambling around here now, but I just want to emphasize how minimalistic filmmaking can be just as good as the big scenes, the big sets, the big productions, because you don't need all that much. It's more important to know how you're working with the gear that you have rather than how many people you are on set. And let's be honest, sometimes you're putting more people on a set just so you can charge more to your clients. Solo filmmaking, minimalistic filmmaking, I really encourage you to go out there and just have fun because it's not as hard as you would think it is. Thanks. Ciao.